Okay, let's work out midterm. Let's see the first question. We're given V. Um, personally, I like the point formula. So get negative one, four, negative five. Because I don't have to keep it writing IJ case. Then W equals the one, one, negative one. So I need to calculate three things. So three V, so let's calculate the 3v, the negative 3, 12, negative 15, 7, w, well, negative 7, w, actually, right? Because of what we're going to do, 3v minus 7, w. So I get negative 7, negative 7, negative 1, right? Then positive 7, because the negative 7 times negative 1 becomes positive. Now, 3v minus 7w, I just add those two, I need 3 minus 7w, again, need 10, component-wise, 12 minus 7, I get 5, negative 15, and positive 7, negative 8. And that's it, if you want, you can write that negative 10i plus 5j minus 8k. Now V dot W, that product is a number, right? It's not a factor anymore. It's not a factor anymore. So we just multiply V and W component wise. So negative one times one, negative one, plus four times one, four, negative five times negative one becomes positive five. So negative one plus nine, that's eight. Now V cross W, Cross, remember we have two vectors, so what do we do? Do I, I J, K, then V, negative one, because then V cross W, four, negative five, W, one, one, negative one. So for the I component, remember you can know this column, you can know this row, get a determinant of these four numbers, four, negative five, one and negative one. Then J is in that one, uh, one two position, so it's I. I is positive because the one one first row, first column, one plus one is an even number, so it's positive. J is in the first row, second column, one plus two is odd, so it's get negative. Then forget about this, forget about this. So take a determinant of negative one, negative five, one and negative one. Then K is first row, third column, so even again, so K is positive term. Then forget about this, ignore this. Again, determinant of negative one, four, one, one. Now, take a determinant, right? Four times negative one, negative four. Negative four minus negative five becomes, maybe let's do step by step. Negative one times four, negative four. Minus one times negative five, negative five, that becomes plus five. That's I term. Then J term, J term may be right later. So now negative one times negative one, positive one. One minus one times negative five becomes positive five. Become one plus five. Okay. Then this is J. Then for K, but negative one times one, negative one, minus one times four negative four, and that's k. Then we simplify. So get a positive i, because negative four plus five, that's one, one i, minus one plus five, six, minus six j, then minus five k. So that product is a number. Cross product is still in a vector. All right, so these two solutions. So, 3v minus 7w, get this. Cross product, I mean, that product will get a number. Cross product is still get a vector. Now let's see number two. We want to find the equation of the line passing through these two points. So remember the line as a vector, we have an initial vector. We can treat anyone as initial vector. 
Maybe let's choose the zero one zero as the initial vector. <clears throat> then plus t times the direction vector. How do we get direction? So this is in, we're treating this one as the initial vector. That means this is the end vector. So we use zero one one minus. 0, 1, 0, to get a direction vector. So 0, 1, 0, plus this one, 0 minus 0, which is 0, 1 minus 1, which is 0, the 1 minus 0 is 1, t. You can keep it in this form if we want to keep it simplifying. <clears throat> you can add those two vectors, two vectors right? So you get a 0, 1, 0, plus zero, zero, t, to get zero, one, t. Okay, you may have different, um, you, may diff you may have different vectors because I choose this direction, right? You may choose another direction. You may choose this one as the initial vector, this as the end vector. So your answer is a little bit different, but it's still right. Okay, sweet. Three, we want to find the equation of a line parallel to this, right? And passes this point. So we have a plane. Right? Let's see a point, like one, two, four, somewhere. We just need to find a line parallel to this. Well, what do we use? We're going to use a normal vector, the idea of normal vector. Right? Idea of normal vector. So how do we find this normal vector, right? The coefficient of x, coefficient of y, coefficient of z gives a normal vector. Normal vector is, this is just one of the normal vectors, right? That's the infinite many, but this is just one of the normal vectors. This is one, negative three, one, five, right? So this line, so we can use this, because this line parallel to this plane, so, the normal vector also normal to this line. We use this idea. Two vectors form 90 degree or um, perpendicular to each other, the dot product is zero. So how do we find a vector? We need to find it. So we have this vector, normal vector. How do we find a vector here? So x, y, z is the ending point. So x, y, z, ending point minus negative one, two, four. Right, subtract those two points on this line we're trying to find. So we'll have a vector. Then with that product, this with this normal vector, one, negative three, five, that, that product is zero. So just do some calculation. X minus negative one becomes X plus one. Then Y minus two, Y minus two, Z minus four, Z minus four. That product is one, negative three, one, five, equals to zero. Mm. <coughs> okay, now let's do the calculation. <clears throat> so we multiply component wise, we have the x plus one plus negative three times y minus two plus five times z minus four <clears throat> equals zero. So we have x, x minus three y plus five z to get a number, what's the number? So I have a one, this give us six, seven, seven minus 20, negative 13, negative 13 move to the other side, become positive 13, right? So this is one way, actually more calculation. Another way you think about this, you can think of this way. So this line parallel to this plane, and this line is contained in a plane, which is parallel to this plane. So the normal vector is for this, and is also for this. And the parallel, what can you, what, the parallel just means the constant number is different. So you just do x minus three y plus five z equals d, right? Equals d. Then it's a plug in this number to find the d. So negative one minus three times two 
plus 5 times 4, you get D. And uh, this is a D equals to 13. So you can get this right away. But ideally, you do this because this is, you know, like a normal way anyway. Let's see, four. Four, we want to find the volume of this parallelopept determined by these four uh, vertices. So, which means we need to get a three vectors. You get three vectors. So first we need to say initial vector. So maybe we can choose initial vector, right? Initial point. Right? Then we can find this vector, another vector, then the third vector. So let's choose the first one to be initial vector. So we use one, 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 subtract zero, one, zero to get a vector. So those are four vertices, four points. We subtract points component-wise to get a vector. So one minus zero is one, one minus one is zero, one minus zero is one, so we get a one. Then zero, two, zero, minus zero, one, zero. Zero minus zero is zero, two minus one is one, zero minus zero is zero. Then we have three, one, two, minus zero, one, zero. Three minus zero is three, one minus one is zero, two minus zero is two. So now remember the determinant, definition of a determinant is absolute value of the determinant. It represents the volume spanned by the vectors. So here we have three vectors, so they span a 3D volume. So one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, three, zero, two. Right, so what do we do? We choose to work with the middle to work with this row. Because all I have to do is just do the one, because this is zero, this is zero. And one is in second row, second column. So two plus two is positive. So I get a positive value. Then take the determinant, forget about this row, forget about this column. Take the determinant one, one, three, two. So that's one times two, that's two. One times three, three. So two minus three, need one. But we want the volume is absolute value of negative one. So which is just positive one. Okay. Let's see, five. Five, okay, first we cylindrical. Cylindrical, so we have R equals to, no, what do you mean, R? X equals to R sine data. Y equals to R cosine data, polar coordinates, right? In cylindrical, Z doesn't change. So for cylindrical, we get z equals to r square sine square minus cosine square. Mm. Okay. Uh, all right, spherical. Spherical, we have rho with z equals to rho cosine phi. Oh, then r rho sine phi. Okay, then I have to switch to this. So we get rho cosine phi equals to x squared. X r is rho sine phi. Then multiply by sine theta square minus rho. Oh, sine phi cosine delta squared. We still have to simplify a little bit. And cosine phi equals to rho times sine square, sine square phi, sine square phi. Right? You, can, you can factor out sine square phi. Then we have sine square minus cosine square. If you want, you can use double um, double angles. Otherwise, you can keep it like this. Cosine squared. Okay, let's hit six. Six. The first one we want to find F composed with the path. Well, what is the path? The path. 
I've composed with the path. The path is negative t cubed, 2t squared, 3t, right? Because x takes x, y, z, so this is our x, this is our y, this is our z. Then f is defined as the first component, x squared minus y squared, x squared minus y squared, or let's write down negative t cubed squared, Minus y squared, 2t squared, squared. Then 3xy, so 3 times negative t cubed, times y, 2t squared. Then z squared, z squared, which is 3t squared. Then let's simplify it. So let's f composed with c of t. So negative squared become positive. So t raised by six, three times two is six, minus two squared is four. T two times two is four, first component. Second component, three times negative one times two is negative six. T to the third, multiply by t squared, then t to the fifth. Then three squared is nine, nine t squared. This is the first part, just do the composition, okay? Second one, find the parameterization for the tangent line to the curve. Um, I think many of us forget about this. If we use the Taylor's approximation, linear approximation, okay? or Taylor's first order approximation. Okay. So which is, if you want to use Z, no, we don't want to use Z because Z is taken in this case. Um, we could still call it f of x. No. So we need to evaluate at t equals 1. Let's evaluate. So add t equals to 1. Because we need a function value first. We need a function value first. So that's f of. Um, so that's the function, right? T one. So we have 1 raised by 6. Um, we have 1 raised by 6 minus 4 times 1 raised by 4, negative 6 times 1 raised by 5, 9 times 1 is squared. So 1 minus, so 1 minus 4, negative 3, negative 6, and positive 9. So that's our function value at t equals 1. So we need this one in the formula as the first term. Then the second one is a linear first order, linear approximation. So we need to find f prime. So f prime of c of 1. So let's do f prime here, c of t. That equals to 6t to the fifth power minus 16t to the third power, then negative 30t to the fourth power, and 18t. Right. Then substitute this into 1. So that's 6 times 1 is 6, minus 16 times 1 is into 16, so that's negative 10. Then negative 30 times 1, negative 30. 18 times 1, that's 18. So we'll get our direction vector, basically. Mm. Oh, all right. Yeah, that's it. So what is our line? Because we're looking for the tangent line. So L of t equals, no. No, okay, I was wrong. We're not using Taylor's first word. We're not looking for planes. We're still using the idea of L of t equals the initial vector plus p times the direction vector. Looking for a line, not a tangent point. Direction vector, we're still using this. So we have an initial vector. We can treat this one as our initial vector, f of c of one. So the negative three, negative number six, one. Then plus direction vector, right? This is our direction vector. For, however, we have t equals 1 here, so we do t minus 1 times our direction vector, negative 10, negative 30, and 18. 
If you leave like this, that's perfect. If you want to simplify a little bit, that's fine also. Okay, that's it. That's for two. That's for six. Let's see seven. Seven. Where F goes from, always check the space. Goes from two space to three space. And G goes from G goes from three space to three space, right? Then so this is G. Then G compose with F is from two space to three space. So this one in N should be three by two matrix. It's always good to have this dimension count to get an idea. All right. Now let's just calculate. So for this one, we don't really have to compose. If we compose, the calcul calculation will be tedious. So we want to use a theorem. The theorem says D, G compose with F. This is a D, G, but G takes F as a component. Then as the input, multiply by D, F. We want to use this formula. Okay, so let's calculate the dg. Well, dg, g is a three by three image. Uh, no, g is going from three space to three space. So dg should be three by three matrix. We can treat this one as a g, first component, second component, third component. So we have partial g1, partial w, because we have three variables, partial g1, partial s, partial G1, partial T, right? The second would be partial G2, partial W, partial G2, partial S, partial G2, partial T. Then partial G3, partial W, partial G3, partial S, partial G3, partial T. So you get these three by three matrices. So let's calculate. First component, W, that would be one, no S and T, that would be zero, zero. The second, G2, G2 in W direction is zero. In S direction, it's still E raised by S. And in T direction, it's also zero. G3, in W direction, is zero. In S direction, is E to the T. In T direction is S E to the T. Right, that's a DG. Then we can evaluate. So remember here, because G takes F as input. So this is W, this is S, this is a T. Right. So we're given X3, Y to be one. So we can calculate, so F of, so W equals X, Y, equals three times one, which is three, and S equals to X minus Y, equals to three minus one, which is a two, and T equals X plus Y, equals three plus one, equals to four. So we can calculate this at uh, three, Two and four. So what do we get? First row still get a one zero zero. So zero so well, e to the s. S is the second one, so e squared. Zero. And then zero e to the t, t is a four, so e to the four. And the S, S is 2, 2 e t 2 e 4, 2 e to the fourth power. Okay, so this is our DG evaluate at the given. So now let's do DF. So DF, well, F, what is this? Right. Think of this as partial F1, partial F2, partial F3. 
Okay, so we'll have a partial F1 in terms of X, partial F1 in terms of Y, then partial F2 in the X direction, partial F2 in Y direction, then partial F3 in X direction, partial F3 in Y direction. We get a three by two because this is R3. Domain is R2, so we get a three by two matrix. Well, let's calculate. So partial F1 in the X direction, we get a Y. In Y direction, we get X. Partial F2 in X direction, we get a one. In Y direction, we get a negative one. Partial F3 in X direction, we get a one. In Y direction, we get a negative one. Then we want to evaluate at a given three comma one. So you get one, three, one, negative one, one, one. Now we multiply these two matrix. So DG, so I should write use. Let's use here. So one, three, one, one. So I have DG multiplied by DF matrix. Remember, actually, matrix multiplication has no signs. DG is a DF. Well, DG is 1, 0, 0, 0, e to 0, 0, e to the fourth power, 2, e to the fourth power. Multiply by 1, 3, 1, negative 1, 1, 1. How do we multiply matrix, matrices? We take the first row vector, multiply by the column vector. Right? Okay, so we have three by three matrix. We have three by two matrix. So the result should be three by two matrix. So this should be three by two matrix. We should have three, uh, three rows, two columns. So one zero zero times that product with one one one, so we get, what do we get? We get a one. Then one zero zero dot product with three and one one, we get, in this, we get a three. Then take the second one, zero e two zero dot product with this one, one one one, we get an e two. Then zero e two zero dot product with three and one one, we get a negative e two, e to the second power. Then the last row we'll get zero e to the fourth power, two e to the fourth power that product with one one one. What do we get? We get an e to the fourth power plus two e to the fourth power. We get a three e to the fourth power. Then that product with the second row three negative one one. So we'll get zero. We we'll get negative e to the fourth power. We we'll get positive two e to the fourth power. We we'll get an e to the Fourth power, so the one time e to the first power. And that's it. That's the end solution for you at the given point three one. The seven. Now let's see eight. Eight. We see x squared plus y squared, x cubed minus y cubed. So right away we should think to use the polar coordinates to use this equation, right? If x, y approaches zero, that means r approaches zero. So we can switch this and also x equals r sine data and then y equals r cosine data. So it's changing to be, let me change the coordinates. So x, y, so we know r goes to zero. Theta, we could just hold theta uh, still for now. So zero theta. And x, so we have r cube sine cube theta minus, let's factor r cube minus cosine cube theta in the numerator. And in the denominator, we just get a 3 r squared. Right. Now we can perform consolidation. So r cube simplifies like this. So we get a limit r theta approach to 0 theta. And we'll get a r times cosine cubed theta minus, no, sine, sine cubed theta 
minus cosine cube theta. Now we can do some arguments. So we want to prove this to be zero, right? Why this is a zero? So when r goes to zero, r multiplied by something, unless this is infinity, otherwise it would be zero. So can this go to infinity? Never. Because sine and the cosine bounded in between negative one, sine and cosine, right? Is bounded in between negative one and one. And the cube is also bounded in between of negative one and one. So the value goes to negative two up to two. So zero times a finite number is always zero. So that's to prove this limit is zero. Now let's see nine. So we want to find the tangent plane to this at this. So this one, we want to use Taylor's approximation, first order approximation, right? So first we evaluate each function value at zero, zero. Remember, exp means e to the power two x plus three y. So that's e to the zero power, right, which is one. So function value at zero, zero is one. Then we need to take partial derivatives. So partial f, partial x, which is in x direction, so by two, we we'll get two. So we'll get two e to the power two x plus three y. Then we want to evaluate at zero, zero. So we just get two. So partial f, partial y in y direction. And we also want to evaluate at the origin. So 3y, right? But she will get 3 e to the 2x plus 3y. Evaluate at 0, 0. So get 3. And that's it. So tangent plane, we can use z. So equals the function value, which is 1 plus partial derivative in x direction, multiply by the difference x minus x naught. But this x not y not x minus zero just x. Then plus three times y minus zero just y, and that's it. That's a tangent plane to the function add to the origin. Let's see ten. So we want to compute the gradient. Right, so we see the x, y, z are symmetric in this function. So we just have to calculate one. So x, y, z equals, so let's just calculate the first one. Take a derivative of the top, we do the in x direction, right? Or oh, maybe let's first write down the definition. x direction, we should add f in y direction, we should add f in z direction. That's the definition of gradient. And now let's do a calculation. So in x direction, we just have to use a quotient rule because x appears in the numerator, x appears in the de denominator, we have to use a quotient rule. So take a derivative of the numerator, get a yz, multiply by the denominator. So get x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Then minus the derivative of the denominator in x direction, which is 2x, times the numerator, which is x, y, z. Right, then take a denominator squared. So I got x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Well, let's simplify this. And the other two components are very similar. Let's simplify this. So we got a y, z, x squared, right, by the first term. And this term give us two, negative 2x squared y, z. So we see we don't really have to calculate y, z. Can do this, right? We just get two negative two x squared, x squared minus uh two x squared. So we get a y squared plus z squared minus x squared. Right, it's the first component. Then actually we can you know just not to write so many. So all divided by the same denominator, right? X squared plus y squared. Plus the square, then square, y plus square here, then square. That's by quotient rule. So x, y, z are symmetric in this function. So the second one, you see, for the x component, x is missing. For the y component, y should be missing, right? So the x, z 
then x squared plus z squared minus y squared. We just have to change the variables. Then in z direction, so z should be missing here. So we get um, x squared plus y squared minus z squared. And that's it. Mm. Okay, let's see, 11. So given the position vector as a path, so we want to find the speed of this particle at t equals to four pi. So the speed is just the derivative of the position. Right? We just have to find the c prime of t. C prime of t equals to cosine t, negative sine t, sine t, cosine t, t squared to t. Then at four pi. So we just have to evaluate at four pi. Or negative sign, remember four pi is the same c prime of zero. Okay. Sine zero is zero. Cosine zero is one. And two t two times, oh, not for this one. Let's keep okay for the for the sine value, cosine value, four pi same, but not for two t. So let's keep this. So zero, one. And two times four pi, eighteen, eight pi. Now find the speed. Speed is the magnitude of this vector. So this is the square root of zero squared zero, one squared is one plus a pi squared, a times a sixty four pi squared. That's it. Keep as it is. So that's it. That's for a. For b. Is C prime ever orthogonal to C? C. If they are orthogonal, that means that, that product is zero. So C prime, C prime is a negative sign, cosine, and two T, that product with C cosine, sine, and T squared. Is this equal to zero? So we we'll ask our ourselves. Negative sine, cosine, that's negative sine, cosine, plus cosine and sine, cosine and sine. That cancel to be zero. Then 2t plus 2t times t squared, 2t cubed. Okay. okay, so when will this be zero? Because we have a variable t in it. Those two terms cancel each other. So we still get 2t cubed equals zero. Well, that means t equals zero. So yes, indeed, when t equals zero, the two vectors are orthogonal to each other. Let's see 12. 12, we want to find the second order Taylor formula, right? We're not given a specific numbers for the point, but we use these two to represent that. So Taylor's second formula is we get u of x, y equals to e to the 1 minus 2 x naught cosine y naught function value, right? Plus the fourth order derivative. So we just have to calculate the derivative. So partial u, partial x, it's a negative 2 e to the 1 minus 2 x. Then partial u, partial y, yeah. Cosine multiplied by cosine y. Then partial u, partial y, partial u, partial y. That's negative sine y. Maybe I should write sine y later. The cosine y due to a nice sine y, so negative e to the one minus two x sine y. Right. Then because to the second order, so we need to calculate the second orders. So second orders in x direction, which is we have negative two times negative two, four passing four. So four e raised by negative two x cosine y. 
then partial square u, partial y, partial x, mixed partials. So we get negative and negative sign become positive sign. So two e to the negative one minus two x sine y. Then in y direction, we take the derivative of this in y direction again. So we get a negative e to the one minus two x cosine one. When we evaluate at x not y not, all we have to do is change the x and y to be x not y not. So plus this will be a long writing. Plus the first partial in x direction, so get a negative. So plus a negative, plus a negative, so that's changing to be negative. Minus two e to the one minus two x naught cosine y naught multiply by x minus x naught, the difference in x direction. Then plus this one becomes a negative e to the one minus two x naught sine y naught multiplied by y minus y naught. So this is a linear approximation. Now second derivative plus four. Remember second derivative will have a half, right? Four, four multiplied by half will have two, two e to the one minus two x naught cosine y naught. Well, this is a second derivative in x direction, so we get x minus x naught squared. Then the mixed partials, mixed partials we have two of them, so we don't need to multiply by half. So we get a plus two e to the one minus two x naught sine y naught. Mixed partials x minus x naught and the y minus y naught. Then lastly, Second partial is in y direction, so minus a half. Then e raised by one minus two x naught cosine y naught. In y direction, that would be y minus y naught squared. All right, we don't consider the tail. Okay, so we can just leave the tail. Okay, the tail can be we always in our course. We always consider as we go higher orders, it goes to a zero. So that's it. That's 12. Let's see 13. 13, we want to find the maximum, the absolute maximum and minimum value on this closed unbounded right, disk. So what do we do? So first, remember the boundary. Boundary, we have so the the open set is x squared plus y squared less than one. And the closed set is x squared plus y squared equals one. So we have to divide into two cases to consider this. So firstly, we find the critical point on the open set, x squared plus y squared le less than one. So we're by finding the gradient. So the gradient equals to two x minus two and two y. So we set this one to be zero. We saw we get an x equals a one, y equals zero. So critical point is one comma zero. Now, what do we do on the boundary? Right. Do we want to, so we need to use a parameterization. Remember how do we parameterize a unit circle? We say c of t equals to sine t cosine t, right? So we can consider f of x, y as f takes the path as input. So x equals to sine t, so sine squared t, so we'll get sine squared, x squared, then y squared, cosine squared, minus two times sine t, then plus one. Okay. So this is a function in terms of t. You can think of this as just some function g of t. So we want to take a g prime of t. Right, g prime of, oh, we can simplify. This two becomes a one, right? So we get uh, negative two sine t plus two. Simplify this one to be one. So that just become two. So then we take a derivative of this. So g prime of t is going to get a negative two cosine t. 
Now, how do we take the derivative of this? How do we find the minimum and maximum of a single variable function with a set to be zero? Right. So we solve this. That means so when does cosine? So this means cosine t equals zero. So when does cosine? Which angle cosine t will be zero? Two values, right? T equals to pi over two and three pi over two. So which is corresponding points of that? So c of pi over two is sine pi over two is one, cosine pi over two is zero, and the c of three pi over two, sine three pi over two is a negative one, and it's cosine three pi over two is zero. So we get two critical points. Two critical points. Um, to think of this as a function, right? To think of this as a path, as a path, then plug into this function. So now we have three critical points. We have one, oh no, those two are the same. Right, those two critical points are the same. So we have two critical points. So we just have to evaluate f of one comma zero. What do we get? X value is one, so we get a one plus zero minus two times one plus one. So we get a zero for this. And then f of a negative one comma zero. We get a one plus zero, because negative one square one, right? Minus two times negative one plus one. We get four. So compare this. So this is a minimum. This is a maximum. Okay, that's 13, 14. 14 is the last one. Let's see 14. 14 were given two vectors, so a vector and b vector. So we want to find out the derivative of that, that product. So we could either use the product rule for this or just calculate right, a dot, the that product first, let's see, a dot b. a dot b is e to the t cosine t t cube that product with e to the negative t sine t negative two t cube. So e to that remember that product is a number, right? So have e to the t times e to the negative t plus cosine t times sine t plus what becomes minus plus a negative minus two t to the t cube times t cube to t to the six. So this two become e to the zero power, which is one plus cosine t sine t, or if you want, we can write as half of cosine. Well, let's keep this. Right, half angle, half, half sine t. Let's keep this. Then minus 2t to the 6. Cosine t, sine t. Right. Might be easier to write down as half sine to t. As half sine to t. So the angle, right, using the double angle formula. So that's a dot product with 2. Then we see this as a function, right? This is some function. You can think of this function as some function as of t. How do we take derivative? Just take derivative of the that. So a dot b derivative. Then oh, I don't write the equal sign here. That's that. So derivative is a t b b derivative. Derivative of one is zero. Derivative of this is a half times cosine two t times two by chain rule two minus twelve t to the fifth t to the fifth y by six. Right. Then half times two is one. So it's a cosine angle two t minus twelve t raised by five. And that's it. So that's the midterm.